Welcome to the 2022 Seminovich Prize. Bonsoir et bienvenue au Prix Seminovich 2022. The four artists you will learn more about tonight embody the concept of experimentation and the spirit of invention that are fused in the Seminovich Prize. Their nomination represents the highest level of peer recognition in the profession, and tonight we stop to celebrate their achievements with the highest honor this country can bestow. Je me présente. Je suis Guillermo Verdecchia. Je suis un auteur, metteur en scène et dramaturge. Et cette année, j'ai eu le plaisir de présider le jury de Prix Seminovich. Tonight, I will be your master of ceremonies. And I join you from the Harbourfront Centre Theatre in Toronto, located on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. I want to give thanks for the land upon which we all gather and celebrate this evening and recognize the indigenous peoples as the first storytellers on this land. Ce soir, nous tournons les projecteurs sur les metteurs en scène, ces êtres singuliers qui transforment idées et intuitions en action et qui insoufflent de vie sur la scène les mots inscrits sur la page. Directors are variously and sometimes simultaneously psychologists, sociologists, philosophers, alchemists, and pataphysicists. They are coaches and mentors. They are steady guiding hands and doubting Thomases. Dreamers and leaders, directors synthesize light, sound, fabric, gesture, bodies, language, space, and time to reveal something important about what it is to be human. Joignez-vous à moi pour féliciter les finalistes, ces créateurs d'œuvres transformatrices et influentes. The 2022 Seminovich Prize shortlist, presented by Power Corporation of Canada, includes Marie Brassard de Montréal, Québec, Ravi Jane from Toronto, Ontario, Anne-Marie Kerr from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Sherry J. Yoon from Gibson's British Columbia. In the next 20 minutes, we will learn more about these four exceptional artists through a series of documentary portraits. Some of what you'll see is work in progress, experiments, rehearsal footage, offering us a chance to witness different stages of the creation process. Ce soir, Nous nous retrouvons en compagnie des collègues et des passionnés de théâtre d'un océan à l'autre, de Terre-Neuve jusqu'en Colombie-Britannique. Avant de démarrer, je vous invite à nous dire bonjour dans la fenêtre de discussion et de taguer le prix Semenovitch si vous suivez cette conversation sur Facebook, Twitter ou Instagram. Anne-Marie requests absolute vulnerability and truth from her collaborators, and it speaks volumes that the people she works with are willing and able to open up and show their ugliness, their beauty, their fears, and then put it into the work and create play. And 
make sure you were truly in that light because you got to know where to look. Okay. Can I have a little more of that on the monitor or is that going to be too crazy? Sound is in place, acting's in place, set's in place, and we're really adding lights for the first time on this, uh, this pass. Have a great show. So, yeah, this is our moment. Working with Emery is both really fiery and really subtle, or really intimate or really emotional and also really explosive. She's really funny, and maybe that's the, the vaulting off point, and then we'll hit you with a desperate truth about your performance or your offer, <laughs> so you can't ignore it. For example, I believe nothing you say. There's nothing going on in your eyes when you do that. Do it again. I feel like I dig and dig uh, this light, to this find this kind of naive, child place. Let us see you, let us know you in all of your failures and all of your faults so that it exposes ways of seeing the world that hold a deeper truth. Anne-Marie is very good at creating magic with the actor's body out of thin air. It's about a three-dimensional experience that is asking the mind and the thoughts and the heart to be expressed and shared physically through the body. There's something about treading in territory that we know that keeps us in our habitual ways of expressing, ways of thinking, that keeps us hiding keeps us protected from ourselves by putting collaborators and myself into unfamiliar territory. It gives us a chance at being seen. I think that's it. I can see people looking at me in that way that you look at a person who's in the middle of a physical crisis. Do you think you're gonna deliver here in the elevator? <laughs> She's not scared to go into the dark, which is amazing because she's such a bright human, but she carries it all with her. For those of us who are interested in pushing ourselves to be more courageous, she's the perfect leader Talk for that. scale a little bit. It has this comedy and it has this kind of lightness inside the devastation, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that feels active to me in terms of how people come and go. A common yeah, theme that she's interested in, it's gonna sound really dark, but existential terror. That feeling that I think is really universal to existence, that you're not enough, or that you really desire to be something. I love my daughter two bits, but it's also like, you know what I mean? We are shining a light on a very complicated, very harsh subject as brightly as possible. And that's our job, to see if we can really showcase it in a spotlight. We don't need to answer it because the world hasn't answered it yet. À cette époque-là de ma vie, j'étais obsédé par les mots. I do feel that the larger gesture and the thing that kind of keeps me in this is that I, uh, I want to grapple with stuff that provokes social action and people leave the theater feeling they can rise up to something and that they recognize that in their lives, if not in themselves. Robbie's work challenges us to reimagine the role of theater in our society with a simple provocation. Why not? For more than 15 years, he has been transforming the stories we tell, how we tell them, and who we tell them to and for. His commitment to mentoring and supporting future arts leaders is palpable. The impact of his work reverberates far beyond the stage and leaves us inspired and connected to our common humanity.
Rehearsal rooms are where the revolution happens. That's why we spend so many hours in dark rooms with the hopes that what we create reaches someone and says, yeah, let's change how I think, let's change the decisions I make, and let's change the world. Ravi is a convener. He brings people together. He wants people to feel like they belong in the room, in the conversation. This is what he does so masterfully, right? He just knows how to draw you in. So it's not necessarily like punch, block, mm -hmm. kick. We can lean into a kind of contemporary dance world. It's not that they're physically fighting, but there's a kind of nobility and strength and dignity to the body. Yeah. Ravi is, is innately just a very playful person and he brings that spirit into every rehearsal room that he's in. And he opens up a sense of play in everybody in that space, whether it's the actors or the stage manager or the designers. I'm here, I'm here. So that merging of time, past is now and now is future, kind of like overlay of like the timeline. I think that's freaking awesome. The name of his theatre company is Why Not? And I feel like that is how he goes into the work. And if someone were to say, well, no, we can't do that, I think Ravi's response is, why not? It's past and present, always. So past is this story that has been written. And with it, in the past, it comes with a ton of baggage. I think what I'm doing is playing with your assumptions of what the story is and challenging those assumptions as you receive it in order to find this new space. And that is a different story. <laughs> if we're actually able to let go of those assumptions, we can meet it in a completely different way and see and hear and feel things that we haven't before with this story. So now in this contemporary setting, with these contemporary bodies and voices, there's this tension a really exciting tension that happens. And that's what I'm playing with. The idea that things should remain the way they always have been, I think, is ultimately destructive. And Ravi will not allow that to happen. What I like to do is recognize how different everyone is in the room and then harness that difference. Provoke your imagination. So when you took off, did you jump off? For Ravi and for all the people that he works with and tries to support, it's never about the future. We need to change the world now. Teaching is a huge part of the artistic practice because again, that is the lineage of what this art was. It was always passed down from person to person. It's a baton that we pass through generations. Hey, Mary, are you there? So I just got back from the This Gen residency in Ottawa. I was like, oh, This Gen's going back to its roots, which was a gathering place. This Gen Fellowship is really designed to connect these artists to a larger network of people around the world like them who are doing it. Because when you realize you're not alone, you become unstoppable. <laughs> Innovation and excellence, it's in front of us the whole time. For whatever reason, whatever barrier, we just aren't unlocking it. We aren't allowing ourselves to see more in that thing. And there's always more. As important, I believe everything is that I do. Having a kid, it's also like, yeah, but don't take yourself so seriously. You know, have fun. Marie Brassard compte parmi les artistes canadiennes à la tête de la innovation dans l'emploi du son, de la lumière et de la vidéo sur scène. Une artiste qui sait véritablement matérialiser ses intentions dans des œuvres toutes plus uniques, inventives et personnelles les unes que les autres.
quand ça s'arrête, je sais jamais trop vraiment où je suis, ni combien de temps je vais devoir attendre le prochain rêve. À un moment ou à un autre, je sais que ça va recommencer. C'est comme un vacuum et je vais être aspirée. Des fois, là où je vais, c'est infernal. Et je pense à la mort. Et je voudrais que ça s'arrête. Par cette phrase, j'ai commencé à entrer justement dans le monde de la mise en scène et du spectacle et de l'autoreprésentation. Mais aussi parce que cette histoire que je raconte dans Jimmy, c'est un peu une fable sur la vie, sur l'existence, sur l'amour, sur l'identité. Mais c'est aussi une sorte de métaphore pour l'acte de création. Les cheveux blancs que je, je cacherai sous, sous la tessure et les marques que la chirurgie aura laissées sur moi. La, la peau qui rougira sous un milliard de vénules éclatées lézardant le visage. Ouais, il faut dire que la laideur, c'est exactement ça. Wow! Mmh. T'es puissant. Mmh. Le premier spectacle que j'ai vu de Marie, c'était une révélation, une ouverture sur un nouveau langage. Et j'ai découvert que le théâtre pouvait être transcendant et très actuel. Et j'ai été ébloui, vraiment. Si ça frotte au plafond, ça peut compliquer okay. au montage. Marie est souvent drawn to some form of something unknown something that is either beyond human perception or on the other side of a wall or being spoken in an incomprehensible language. There's often this feeling of a known unknown. Elle fait énormément confiance à son intuition. La confiance en l'imaginaire, la confiance dans la poésie, dans les détours de l'art, dans le subconscient, le réel, on ne peut pas le cadrer simplement. Il est toujours multiple, il est toujours fragmentaire. Et donc, elle avance avec ces savoirs-là et ben, nous, on, on la suit. C'est une quête perpétuelle, je crois. Elle cherche toujours des questions qui ne seront jamais assouvies, en fait. On va voir des choses sur scène pour être témoin d'une audace qu'on n'a pas toujours le privilège d'avoir dans la vie de tous les jours. Ça, ça me semble très bien. Est-ce que c'est plus devant que ce que tu fais normalement? Fais une torsion. Ouais. Okay. Comme ça, tu tires, tu tires, tu tournes, black. C'est beaucoup par rapport à l'existence, les questions philosophiques et des questions aussi par rapport beaucoup à la liberté. Je ne parle pas là, de, de liberté précise, je ne parle pas nécessairement de liberté d'expression ou de liberté, mais la liberté d'imaginer. Bon, on peut faire ça un peu. Oui, oui. Et juste, tu sais, je okay. dis souvent que dans ma vie, la frontière entre le rêve et la réalité est, est assez poreuse et mince, en fait. Oui, la performance de Marie est une expérience expérience qui adresse la partie de notre consciousness and unconsciousness that feeds our dreams. Elle est en train de chercher par quel endroit de sa mémoire, de ses archives, du corps, de sa vie, de sa bibliothèque personnelle, elle va passer pour nous amener dans ces lieux inouïs où on s'en va ensemble. Peu importe d'où on vient, dans quel contexte on a été euh, élevé, euh, quelle est notre culture. Il y a quand même une sorte d'imagerie, de concept, euh, de sensation, une espèce de bassin onirique, si je peux dire, qu'on partage universellement. À l'école primaire, le soir, vers 5 heures, je trempais mes doigts dans cette huile de peau pour faire des dessins sur la porte de la principale, des ronds, des carrés, des cœurs, des visages souriants, tristes. On a une humanité fondamentale et c'est ce que le partage de l'art ou des œuvres artistiques peut nous permettre de toucher parfois. C'est cette communication qui existe au-delà des mots. Sherry is facilitating the kind of work that I have always imagined theater to be. 
that connect citizens to the world around them in imaginative and inspiring ways that generates dialogue about the things that matter to us. I like working with things that are relevant, current, and urgent. And so th there's always an assumption that that means it'll be a certain kind of work. But I really like to push what that means. So what we're trying to do is make it seem most live. Right. So that when they go into headset, they're teleported to here, and they're watching you as if it was in real time. Right. The theatrical threads never disappears. You don't take off a hat and then become a different kind of artist. All that gets carried through in whatever form you use. And that really excites me, I think, working in different forms to keep trying to get to the honesty to show us what makes us human. It's about using those forms to break down conventional barriers and stereotypes and hierarchies, trying to figure out how we're all connected to each other and investigating those places where there is a disconnect and seeing if you can bridge the gap. She hasn't just broken the fourth wall, she's broken all the walls. It's like there's no container in Sherry's head for theater. It's not about the container, it's about the relationship between the artist and the audience. And Sherry is the interlocutor there. She herself is such a warm person, such um, sympathetic and empathetic and sensitive to people and to her surroundings. So that curiosity that she has about the human condition is at the heart of all her work. With an undeniable need to connect people in a time where it is dangerous and unsafe to do so, what can I do? How do we keep the notion of art and theater alive in people's hearts during a pandemic. I always thought of you as an artist. I always thought of you as a dreamer. Writing a, a DIY kind of theater experience that you can do in your own home the way you would play a board game. Being an artist of color is a political act. So either you lean into it or you hide from it. The backlash against Asian communities post-COVID was really terrifying. We were seeing people who could have been our grandmothers beaten up on the streets. You know, Sherry recognized that one way to combat that is to humanize us. I knew that this was an opportunity for us as the Asian community in the performing arts to do something that could flood our communities of positivity. With Stop Asian Hate and also 3.7% initiative. These come from, I think, Sherry's deep-rooted sense of justice about what is right and how we can not just use art to make things that are beautiful, but to make things that refashion the society we live in. So much of Sherry's work is about where we're going to be in the future and how are we going to get there. They're inspiring and joyful and hopeful and optimistic and offering something in a way that I think we're missing right now. In film, there's this notion of the auteur director. It's less common in theater. There's like a handful of people that I think can truly have that moniker. And I think Sherry's one of them. Right now, the purpose of gathering and how humans connect has been completely turned upside down. And as an artist, it is an opportunity. 
It's an opportunity to create work that helps bridge our communities into understanding why arts are needed and how within all these frameworks we still need to come together in all the different ways and forms we can. Before we announce the winner, I'd like to thank the members of the 2022 jury. Director Geneviève Pelletier from Winnipeg. Actor, director and writer Omari Newton from Vancouver. Translator Maris Warda from Montreal. And actress, director and educator Marcia Babineau of Grand Barachois, New Brunswick. It was a pleasure witnessing your thoughtful and rigorous deliberations. You selected a formidable shortlist, and among this unparalleled group, the jury chose a laureate renowned for an absolutely distinctive aesthetic and a serious commitment to deep collaboration. The jury remarked on the theatrical poetry of the laureate's work, on the richness, the multi-dimensionality of it. This artist's work manages to be simultaneously dreamlike, ethereal, and immediate, visceral, compelling. This year's Seminovich laureate is renowned for their long and patient development of work, for deep listening, and for bringing out the best from their collaborators. Cet artiste comprend que le son et l'image parlent aussi puissamment que les mots, et, avec l'apport des collaborateurs desquels elle s'entoure, œuvre à un très haut niveau technique. La lauréate de cette année peut sembler discrète et modeste au premier abord, mais son œuvre est colossale et intrépide. Friends, colleagues, and theater goers, the laureate of the 2022 Seminovich Prize, la lauréate du Prix Seminovich 2022 est Marie Brassard. Félicitations. Congratulations, Marie, Ravi, Anne-Marie, and Sherry. The Seminovich Prize invests in exceptional theater artists and honors the vital space that theater provides for exploration and discovery. The prize celebrates creativity, courage, and the curiosity to imagine what has never been imagined. Created with these values to honor Lou and Eleanor Seminovich, it was engineered to address the unmet need of Canada's theatre artists for public recognition and resources. The Seminovich Prize would not exist without annual donors and sponsors, and we thank them sincerely for their investment in the future of Canadian theatre. Thank you, George Allister and Patrick Boivin from Video Company for directing and producing these exquisite portraits of four of Canada's top directors. And finally, thank you for tuning in. Bonsoir. Good night.
only the beginning.